Okay, so as promised in a previous upload, this video is an explainer to take you through the process of how a betting company views you as a customer and a risk to them, the steps they go through to decide if they're gonna restrict or limit your betting account and betting activity for future purposes. So hopefully in understanding this, you'll be able to make maximum profit, uh, minimize the amount of fuss and faff associated with that, not wasting your time on anything, uh, obviously using strategies like the one we shared last week, very useful video on the channel. If you haven't seen it yet, go and check it out. Um, but let's take you over to the screen, show you how they work in order to decide if you're gonna be a loser or a winner over the longer term, because that's exactly what matters. So if I introduce you to this rather primitive drawing on the screen that I've already created here, we'll fill it out step by step as we go. You can see there's only about four stages there, so it's not that complicated. It's the individual steps that become more complicated as we go forward. Um, so I've spoken to several different trading room uh, staff, if you like, or ex-staff over a period of time. Uh, they've had slightly different variations of this, but long and short of it is, it sounds like this is how the majority of sports books actually uh, vet and filter players as they come through in order to identify their betting activity. So first of all, top left there, you've got yourself. This is where you are right now. You start off, you've not even got a betting account. Moving on to the first step is obviously part of the sign up process. Now, a lot of people don't realize quite how important this is right from the get go, but from the point where you land on the page to sign up and open an account, they already have information about you. So, you know, they're going to look at things like your IP address, um, where you've accessed them from, if you've come via an affiliate link, if you have which affiliate link that was, you know, was it the Racing Post, was it a Google advert? Um, was it a match betting service, for example? Okay, they've then going to get you to fill out the sign up form as you would have to anyway. However, there's a lot of information within that form where they start to profile you and pull you into different groups um, with other customers which are already sharing very similar characteristics. So you've got things like age, sex, location, uh, obviously you've mentioned the IP addresses, where you've come from, uh, affiliate links, the time and date that you sign up also. So if you think about it, if you're somebody who signs up for a, I don't know, Bet365 account uh, for the Grand National and has five or 10 quid each way, then they're already putting you into that pool of recreational punters that have signed up for the Grand National because we all know that, you know, unless you've got inside information or something, the Grand National is priced terribly every year, massive overruns. Uh, also, other things like bonus offers, you know, have you been seeking out bonus offers before you even opened up the um, account? Uh, so all of that goes into the big machine, if you like, for the machine learning um, with the sports book. All that information is logged and you're already starting to be profiled and identified into different groups. So from there, we'll move on to the second bubble, which is where it starts to get a little bit more important. So this is the probationary period. Now, as the name suggests, um, you're on typically up to around about three months probation from the moment your account is opened uh, in terms of the betting firm. Uh, that can then be fast tracked or, or maybe actually held longer going on to the next step, depending on what happens. Now, I'm led to believe a portion of uh, accounts are just trawled through uh, on a daily basis from the, the traders in the trading room, which we'll come to in just a moment. Um, but once you're inside that probationary period, they're just looking at, you know, what are your first bets? Have you signed up, as we said, for an example, for the Grand National, and then gone on to place a place to cut the bets on the football, recreationally, sort of like, is it in play? Is it hours and hours before the start of the event? Was it at value odds? Was it a very bad value odds? Uh, there's a low chance of being picked within that pool is what I want to highlight here. Um, and a lot of the time, I think it's probably fair to say the traders in the trading room aren't too worried about that bracket of people because everybody has to pass through it. Um, but you could be randomly selected is what I'm trying to say here. So if you are starting up a brand new account and going straight in gung-ho uh, with the value bets on the same morning, then you may well be picked out of that group. And if you are picked out of that group, it will become very clear quite quickly uh, for anybody on the trading desk in the trading room that that's what's happened here. You know, are you somebody who's come in, took the bonus offer, placed five bets that are all massive value, took the bonus also because they're not going to like that. That's going to get you fast-tracked to um, having your account closed.
Okay, so the red line along the bottom there just denotes the fact that you could be passed along to the trading desk, which is the, the fourth bubble along, which is the point of no return if you're taking value a lot of the time. So uh, you go past your probationary period, and you could be randomly selected, as I say, uh, and again, it depends on the different pools that you're in in the first bubble, because certain ones would be considered more risky, um, others uh, less so because of the way people have behaved previously with sim similar characteristics to you. So it's much like Facebook and Google, how they're profiling people there. So the next step, the third bubble, is the algorithm stage. Okay, This is where indefinitely uh, a large portion of the user base sit in terms of profiling uh, accounts for the purposes of restriction or even value extraction, which is the alternate side um, which we've talked about in other videos on the channel in the past actually. So once you go into that main bracket, that is uh, you as a customer, the algorith if, uh, algorithmic bracket. So they'll be looking, uh, the algorithm will be constantly checking on your betting behavior. So this is why, uh, when I said in a previous video, a, a five pound accumulator is not gonna throw them off because this is black and white. This is a computer looking at this. Uh, you can't catch it out. If you're an account that consistently bets at a bigger price than um, it, the price should be, and they know what the prices should be, they know where their weak areas are, uh, then the algorithm is gonna flag you, okay? Which is when you get passed over to the trading desk. So uh, if you've ever used a sports book and you've taken value, which you'll see certainly if you use that strategy mentioned in the other video, um, where it says, oh, this needs to be referred to a trader. Okay, that's when you get pushed from the algorithm section over to the trading room, but that's not the only way that that happens because uh, you're not necessarily prompted to that all the time. Your account may be flagged internally. They may put notes on your account um, and it may go to the trading room without you knowing also. Okay, so they know the weaker areas. As I mentioned in the previous video, you know, if you're sort of open up for a, a grand national bet, have a couple of recreational flutters on a horse racing, and then you're, you're taking massive value on some obscure Russian football market or something like that. Uh, that's gonna stick out like a sore thumb, and we can't really get around that. All you can do is, this is why I say, all you can do is take the value as quick as you can uh, in the right places, and know that there's a good chance that you may be restricted. Now, if you, were to say, oh, okay, I'm just gonna use 10 pound bets and take value and I'll take the value slower. That doesn't mean that your account won't be flagged by the algorithm and it doesn't mean the trader won't look at it. It means that maybe it's less likely to happen so quickly, but you know, at the end of the day, how valuable is your time in the middle there? Another thing that the algorithm can also pick up on is staking methods. You may have seen in the news previously, there was a, a court case with somebody in Ireland, um, Bet365, where they said that you were outside of our terms and conditions because you were betting, I think it was Fibonacci, sequence style staking or something like that. So those things are gonna get you prompted into the fourth bubble, which is the one where none of us really wanna go because that's where you get flagged, you get referred, uh, your account will have notes on it, every account will have notes on it. And the trader, interestingly, uh, having spoken to some, the trader doesn't know whose account it is. So the company actually keeps it anonymous from the traders in the trading room, whose bets they're actually looking at. Um, for integrity purposes, I guess, and also the fact that maybe they possibly don't even trust their own traders because they, they want to make money too, right? So once you go over to the trading room, um, your bets are flagged. They can see your betting history. They can see the bets that you've placed. They can see the value that you've placed, the prices, the times at which you've placed the bets. They can see all that information about your profile um, or you know, with certain criteria within your profile, are you male, female? Um, and there's often lots of speculation about, do, you know, do female accounts get flagged quicker because the companies don't expect them to be shrewd betters. I don't know if that's right, but, you know, things like that. Um, your bet history uh, in finer detail so that they can scroll through. And to be quite honest, again, it's black and white. If the algorithm picks you up, you look at somebody's history, you go, you know, this guy can't, they might not know it's me, but the, the bets have come up and he's just taking value every single time. And the more value there is, the bigger he bets. Well, okay, that's got to go in the gub pile, which is where you then get pushed onto the two bubbles at the top there. Um, the red one's obviously being restricted. So rather than actually giving you the pleasure of saying your account is completely closed, goodbye, being able to screenshot that and put that on social media and share that everywhere, what they do is they bring down your staking limits um, and stop you from betting so much. So effectively, you are limited and restricted and, and told to go away, but technically you're not completely closed. Okay, uh, on the other hand, uh, you can see the dotted line that passes up to the, the green bubble there. 
you've got promotions and you know value extraction type methods. So they may look at the account and go, no, this one's fine. Uh, it just happened to be a VIP customer that staked very large. That bet was valued. That bet did beat the SP. Um, but they are not somebody who's been shrewd. They just placed a bet at higher value, which was also where our odds were wrong, but we'll ignore that in this instance. Off they go into the green pile, which means, you know, do you want a bonus? We're gonna keep you on. We're gonna keep you back into that algorithm type bubble, uh, keep you being profiled and monitored, um, whilst sending you promotional offers to keep you betting also. So it's quite interesting when you think about it. Um, it's a very efficient way of doing things, but it's a simple question for them. Are you taking value? Are you not taking value? Are you exhibiting behaviors whereby you know you are a recreational better or are you not? Uh, and so on and so forth. First of all, the algorithm's gonna scroll through you know, thousands and thousands, millions of accounts because there are that many people betting. Um, and then it's gonna flag it for somebody else, a human entity, to take a look at the history and they can decide quite quickly. So when you think, you know, if I place five, two pound bets on obscure markets, will that trick them out? No, because when they look at your account history, they'll just go, well look, he's placed five, two pound bets on obscure markets, and then he's placed 50 on uh, this greyhound or horse, but the price is completely wrong. So you can't necessarily get around it. Take the value as quick as you can. If you get restricted, you get restricted. But the one thing that you might want to bear in mind here is in that probationary period, you might not want to do anything silly straight away, just in case you are uh, vetted manually. So that's how the process works. If you haven't seen it already, please check out this video on the end screen here. It shows you strategy, how you can beat a sports book over and over, taking value from their better odds.